Ride to school day. What do you want PSI wise, Rubes? We fast. Okay, yep, we'll say 140. Welcome back to the Friday vlog series where today. It is actually Friday today, isn't it, Holly? Yeah, Holly always pulls me up. Don't mislead the audience, Dad. If it's not Friday, don't say the Friday vlog series. So we will split the video into my favorite number of parts. You guessed it, being two. Oops. <laughs> G'day, how are you? That's embarrassing. This side of the road, please. Mwah. Have a good day. That kind of derailed my intro there. A mum from the school pulled out while I was riding with the kids there and looked at me like I was a real knobhead. So the kids are now at school and part number one of this video is the BMC has gone. And luckily, I'm on the chapter two rear row. I still had it lying around. It was in a few bits and pieces. The cranks were off it because I was about to sell the power cranks, but that fell through luckily. And as a result, put them back on and I've got a bike to ride for the time being. Actually, before part number two, I should mention there is an opportunity to win yourself a kit, a cycling kit that is, in this video. And part number two is an update on the wind space and the Factor O2 projects. Currently just frames. What's going on? What's planned? Keen to get your thoughts as well as an expert bike fitter's opinion on the wind space and also my wife's thoughts on both frames. So, let's get into it. So I'm at the Girouin Sporting Complex. I just got something in my eye, no doubt a little Sunshine Coast bug. <laughs> and I'm here trying to get a little bit of fitness back after the Nationals last year. I got sick for a week, had some hip flexor issues for a couple of weeks, Christmas, drinking, drinking too much food, all that kind of stuff. But I've just done six sprint efforts, 10 seconds on, about a minute off. I've only done, that's four. I've only done about six of them. And because I'm getting back into it, with neuromuscular work, you just want to ease back into it. So I'm going to do six this week. I'll probably do seven the next, eight the next, and kind of build it up from there. But you might see behind me, I'm back on the Chapter 2 Rare Ray. I have not ridden this bike for about 12 months. It's been for sale, and to be honest, I've done a pretty bad job at trying to sell it. But I think the reason why it's been difficult to sell is because, number one, Chapter 2 is a unique brand. And I think this is a great bike, but a lot of people love their Giants, love their Specialized, Treks, etc. And it's got a one by system, which makes it a unique proposition. But as the old saying goes, when it rains, it pours. I sold the BMC team machine last week. It was a disappointing day seeing that thing walk out the door. And as a result, I've had to go back on the chapter two rear ray, but literally last night, I think someone's finally gonna buy it after it being for sale for about 12 to 18 months. And then I'm gonna be left without a bike for the time being. So one thing you definitely wanna do after sprint efforts is cool down. I think at least 10 minutes spinning in zone one, which I'm gonna do on the way home. I had a good ride. See, the wife's gotten serious this year. We've got the calendar system going. We've never had one of these before. We've also adopted a uh, little baby right there, mate. Rossi's having a drink. Rossi, come say hello. Yep, shake hands. Good boy, good boy. Say hello to it. Oh, <laughs> lovely. So for those interested in the Modex supplement, which I've been taking for some time, I don't like to talk about supplements too much on the channel because people get funny and I get that, but for those interested, I find that reversing it is actually not a bad thing. I take it in the morning when I can, but often I forget. So for me, it helps mostly with recovery. So after a ride, after a session, a few sprints, etc., I'll just have a sweep, put it back in the fridge. It's as easy as that. All right, so an update on what is going on with both frames, the wind space and the Factor O2. And also expert bike fitter, Neil Stanbury's thoughts on the wind space. But before his expert thoughts, let's get my wife's non-expert thoughts on both frames. What do, you, what do you think of, I wanna ask your opinion on, I've got two frames, I've got this one here, watch your face. So what do you think of the wind space? Do you remember what I said to you when you first got it? Yes, but you need to share it with the audience. <laughs> I said it looked like it was, I said it looked like it was from Big W. Why did you say that? Because of the, the text, the copy on it's really bad. Like I don't mind the the kind of the oil slicky fadey colour. It's that's pretty well right. painted, isn't it? Yes, I agree with that. So that's one, and you yeah. felt the weight of that. It's really light. You reckon it's light? Well. Oh, really? Yeah, you wait and see, eh? <laughs> you like the look at that one? Oh shit. Yeah. Why did you say oh shit? Because it feels like it's made of paper or right. cardboard. Like it doesn't not, I mean it, the light, like the weight of it. Oh my God, that's so light. Is that like the lightest frame ever? I don't know if it's ever. But not it's, ever, it's, but the lightest one. One of the lightest frames you can get. It's about 700 grams. <laughs> Do you want to just sit there for the next hour? 
Now before getting into the updates, and we're gonna start with the Factor O2 and then move over to the wind space, I wanted to thank a company that I've been working with for some time now, and to be honest, it makes channels like mine sustainable. And that company is today's video sponsor, being Surfshark. Now, if you're not familiar with Surfshark, they're an award-winning VPN service, and the reason why you would want a VPN service, some people use it so they can trick the internet and tell them they live in different countries so they can watch their favorite Netflix show, which isn't available in their country, but it might be available in another country, but really you should want it because it's like having an online security guard as you step into the online world to protect you from fraudulent activity, ID theft, etc. And for just under $3 AUD a month, you can actually secure your internet with Surfshark's award-winning VPN. If you want to jump on board Surfshark, you can check out the link below and enter the promo code CAMNICALS to get your less than $3 AUD per month offer, which is essentially 83% off and includes three months extra free when you sign up to their 24 month plan. So let's get into update number one. So the Factor O2 frame set. And the first thing that I've decided to put on this bike is a set of 25 millimeter decadence Caden wheels. And Ben from Caden has actually thrown a bit of a spanner in the works. 25 mil decadence clincher, 538.4. Twenty-five mil decadence tubular, a lovely four twenty-two point two. They're fronts, by the way, both those wheels. With the tubular version, which are nine hundred and forty grams a pair, versus the clinches, which is what I was going to go at eleven hundred and ninety grams a pair. So that's like a two hundred and fifty grams saving in the wheels, which is massive. And he's suggesting I tape them instead of gluing them, which is changing my paradigm on tubs a little. So let me know what you think below, tubs versus clinches. The next thing is obviously the group set. In the previous video where we were talking about this frame, a lot of people in the comment section were suggesting SRAM Red 22 Mechanical, which is the lightest group set apparently. So I looked it up and it's available for this bike. From Bike Force Docklands, they're a big bike shop in Melbourne, Australia. And they're pricing them up at around $2,600 AUD, which to me is quite a big investment for an out-of-date group set. Yes, it is the lightest, but I'm a little bit unsure because I feel like the industry is really moving towards 12 speed. And do I want to be left in one or two years' time trying to sell this bike with 11 speed rim? Rim is already going to cause a few issues with the resale, even though I'm a huge Rim Boy fan. And I will continue to buy Rim, but the market is smaller. So I'm thinking I go for 12 speed. And as a result, I've been looking into SRAM Red ETAP Access, but my only concern with it is the price point. It's massive. So I'll be keen to get your thoughts below. SRAM Red Mechanical Red 22 or ETAP Access. And the last thing is I need to get this bike built up somewhere. So if there's any bike shops in the Sunshine Coast area or in Brisbane, that want to put your building craftsmanship on display, please reach out to me, let me know below. We'll tee up a time in the next couple of weeks to get this thing built up and we'll create a build video on the channel. The second one, of course, is the Windspace bike here. Now, before I tell you what's going on, let's hear what Neil Stanbury, the expert bike fitter, had to say about this frame right here. Okay, so I'm just with Neil. We've just wrapped up a, an RCA series. So if you haven't subscribed to that new channel, make sure you do link below. And he's just checking out the wind space frame. It looks flash, mate. You like it? Yeah, I like the color. It's good. Yeah. Don't know, if the paint job's good, that I don't know what that says about the insides, but the, <laughs> mate, it looks it looks great. You were saying something about the bottom bracket area. Yeah, I mean the things you want to look out for in frames, apart from voids in the carbon and that kind of stuff, concentricity of all the all the important turning bits. So yeah. you know that needs to be directly in line with the other side and all this kind of stuff. Uh, it appears to be balloon molded, which is kind of good. I think it's a bit hard to tell, but um, it's where they put long balloons inside the mold and blow yeah. them up to push the resin and the carbon out against the um, the mold. Um, but yeah, it looks it looks as neat as any other frame I've looked inside of. What so do you reckon of the logo? Polarizing. <laughs> Polarizing. Are you a fan? <sighs> I'm gonna say no, <laughs> only because it's so it's such a large sticker. Yes. But the the color, the paint the color, scheme. The paint's good, isn't it? Mate, I the agree. finish looks really good. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm 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 happy. We'll have to see how it rides and see what Raul thinks of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. right. Cheers. So firstly, I wanted to thank Windspace for embracing 
The idea of getting this thing repainted and also inspected. Obviously, I wanted to speak to them first. I think that's the respectable thing to do. And they were okay with it. So I wanted to thank them. And I also wanted to thank Colour Fuel in New South Wales for offering their services to get this thing both inspected and also to get it repainted. But essentially, what I've decided to do is I'm booking a ticket down to Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, assuming these traffic light COVID systems don't pop up and I can't get down there in either mid-March or end of March. Haven't quite locked in the date yet and we're gonna be seeing Raul Lucia from Lucia Technic. Now, if you don't know who Raul is, he's a highly regarded carbon fiber expert who actually has his own YouTube channel, which I'll link to below and has appeared on other channels in the past, such as Mark Ferguson's and Shane Miller's YouTube channel. So that's who's gonna be inspecting this. And I have had a lot of comments saying, well, why don't you inspect a mainstream bike? And maybe we could inspect the factor at the same time. I don't know, keen to get your thoughts below, but I'm kind of keen to have one bike built up, at least in the next couple of months and not delay the process. Like this one's been delayed, but I think it's gonna be worth it. And then in order to keep the process moving, because I'm conscious March, mid-March, late March is still quite a fair way away, I'm gonna get the bike painted by Gary at Carbon Steed in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Gary is a renowned bike painter and he will be painting the bike up for me in the next two to three weeks. And in terms of color scheme and design, always keen to get your thoughts below, but what I'm thinking of is something similar to this old specialized tarmac I used to own, which has a combination of black and white. And what I'm thinking of doing is, I think we keep the Windspace logo there, but I think I'm gonna go for their other logo, which they've got, we'll remove this one. I'll have Road Cycling Academy down the down tube, and I think we'll leave the Windspace logo there as well. But once again, keen to get your thoughts below. Now, how do you win yourself a kit I mentioned at the start of this video? Now, my friends at Jack Roo, who have created the Road Cycling Academy kit, it's a great kit, they're trying to build up their social media presence and I'm gonna put links below. They're gonna be giving away a kit to one of their followers. You can either go follow their Facebook account or their Instagram account, or if you follow both, you're essentially going into the draw twice. And in the next couple of weeks, I don't know the exact date, I'll put it in the description. They'll be picking one of their followers and sending them a free kit. To give you an idea, I'll put a link below so you can see some of the kits that they've got available to give away. But I like this one, it's just a plain blue one. It's got Jack Roo on the rear and also these bibs. It's great quality gear. Get yourself a free kit. Just go and check out their social media accounts. I'll put it below. That's pretty much it. I'll catch you all in the next video.